nerve. I haven't, I haven't had a fight, like a street fight in seven years. And I, I, was, I was scared and I was getting paranoid because he was so close. He kept getting close to me. I mean, so I defended myself. Who threw the first punch here? He did. He sucker punched me because he's with his friends, you know, and um, when he hit me, and I said, I couldn't even get a chance when he get to him like I wanted to because everybody was like, pulling me, you know, holding me, like, so he could get away from me, so he could get away, and he like, he was, he ran from me, but I was trying to get to him, you know, and, um, like I said, I don't want to take the law in my own hands, you know, at that moment, you know, I was furious, I was ready, I was outraged, I wanted to go off. It happened so fast, I mean, the only thing, I was very upset at the time they ripped my shirt in my pocket, I was just, I was totally upset, and the, the fact that he came back again after he tried and he was unsuccessful, and I mean, I had no other choice but to defend myself. I wasn't going to take any chance on neglecting myself and getting hurt. Are you going to file criminal charges against Mike Tyson? No, me. You know, a situation like this, you know, I don't went for him, but why do that? Just say don't get mad, get even, you know, so I'm um, doing it the right way. I really don't want to press charges because it's really, you know, ludicrous, the whole scene, but the idea that I'm a victim and then he presses charges on me. I mean, I, I don't understand. Who is that, Mom? The night manager of Dapper Dan's Boutique has his own version of what took place and says Mitch Green was looking for trouble. Mitch kept ranting and raving, and Mike stood up because he had made contact. And Mike said, look, do not play me close. In other words, back off. Don't get that close to me. So then Mitch grabbed his shirt and apparently went for his pocket because his wallet fell out. Mitch Green threw the first blow. Now, Mike Tyson did what any man, President of the United States, he punched him in the chest right around, you know, this area right here. Okay. And... I mean, Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. He's not going to have that from anyone. After Mike defended himself, Mitch <laughs> didn't look too pretty, needless to say. I have pictures of Mike beating on Mitch when he was on the floor. You know, he's beating on him, grabbing because Mitch is grabbing on him. I have a picture of after Mike had hit him with a right, because you couldn't see it when he hit him. Sort of like the Spinks punch. You never really got that good angle, but Spink, <laughs> Mike... <laughs> <laughs> Mitch was on his back, legs up in the air like this, you know, and all you saw was his legs and he's laid out. And then another picture. No matter who you blame for causing the fight, by the time it was all over, Green suffered an injury to his eye, and Tyson a hairline fracture to his right hand, and who knows how much damage to his reputation. Early this morning, Tyson was expected to appear at New York's 25th Precinct to receive a summons charging him with simple assault, a misdemeanor. Camera crews were there, and so were the champs' fans. But Tyson and his attorney made other arrangements not to appear. But a number of nagging questions won't go away. Why was the world heavyweight champion shopping in Harlem for a leather jacket, ironically embroidered with the phrase, don't believe the hype, at 4 o'clock in the morning? The only thing we do know is that Tyson's watchful wife, who keeps close tabs on her husband's career, was out of town. I never want my husband to be in a position to have to fight another fight. I want him to step into the ring as often as he wants because he wants to, because he enjoys it. Never for financial reasons. And as much money as Michael makes, he should never have to do it for financial reasons. While last night's fight didn't make Tyson any money, it might have cost him a fortune. Especially if an upcoming multi-million dollar bout in London has to be cancelled. Mitch Green, meanwhile, whose nickname is Blood, seems to have little to lose. Despite the fact he has been arrested for illegal drugs, robbing a gas station, refusing to pay bridge tolls, and has had his driver's license suspended four times, apparently is enjoying all the publicity, and has even been going out of his way to attack the champ any way he can, even below the belt. And I Charged at me, he ran from me like a little fag, a little sissy. He ran 
up for me. And by that time, his friends grabbed me. I like to try to break it up, but they were like sucker punching me at the same time. I'm trying to get to him. He ran from like a little sissy a little homo. If it sounds like Mitch Green wants a rematch, you're right. Except when and if these two heavyweights get together, it won't be in front of a Harlem clothing store, but in a big money arena. No matter what happens, though, as Mike Tyson might say, don't believe the hype. With us now is syndicated boxing writer Mike Marley, who has followed both the careers of the champ and the chump in this, in this occasion. Michael, is there a sense of hype here? Was this, this a setup? Was Mitch Green just trying to get a good payday in the ring? Well, uh, Mitch moves in mysterious ways uh, as his police record and his conduct uh, public and private indicates. You know, he's threatened the life of Don King about 5,000 times. Uh, once at a Larry Holmes press conference, he was so uh, vociferous and threatening to Larry Holmes, he stuck a finger at the champ's face, and uh, one of Larry's agile bodyguards almost tore the finger off with his mouth. But I think Mitch was laying in wait. Perhaps he knew that Mike Tyson was hanging around uh, Dapper Dan's. I don't know where you go up there to get clothes at 4 a.m. <laughs> As you know, Saks and Barney's aren't open at that right. hour, and when you need an outfit, a leather outfit, I guess you go there. But he called you the other day, didn't he? 